Hi, and uh, welcome to this video on Custom Dynamics 365 CRM integration. Hi, my name is Eric, and uh, in this video we're going to create a connection between, I call it CRM, uh, Dynamics 365, Customer Engagement for Sales, there's so many names, I, I just call it CRM as a, a, a unifying name here right now. So a connection between CRM and Business Central. And hang on, you say, there's already a connection between Business Central and, uh, and CRM. And that's right, let me switch over to this one. So if I go into CDS setup, we have a integration. Um, and, and, but the integration is, is basically done in two layers. There's a technical layer, and on top of that, Microsoft built a integration, well, that transfer data back and forth and so on. Um, and what we're going to use in this video is only the technical layer. So I have connected this one only by typing on, on the first page and hit enable. I have not gone through the assisted setup that will generate stuff on both ends and um, but I have just connected them so I connected the lowest level uh, the oh what happens we don't have sorry job queue you can see um, there are some jobs uh, but in reality, they should just be set on hold, all of them, because we're never using them in, in this, this scenario. Um, so how do the technical uh, connection work? Well, if I go in and then I do, uh, I think I can do CDS contacts so if I cl click uh, CDS contacts I get what looks like a normal table I can open the, the inspector tool and see that this is just a table called CRM contact if I go into let me just actually download some symbols here um, so we can see that this looks like a haha you can't see anything because i'm blocking let me uh, see if i can now uh, so behind the scene here behind my big head uh, now the symbol has been downloaded we can see that there's you know fields this is total normal table um if I go into my base app and I find a table called CRM contact, we can see that this is, this is a table object. What we can also see is that the table type is different. So from a AL perspective, this is just a table. We can do find set and insert and set range and all the usual stuff. But the table is not stored in the SQL database with the rest of it. The table happens to sit on um, on CRM. So, so the table object here is more like a proxy. Um, and you might it when you're working with with because CRM has just as much customizations as as we have so you might have extra fields added in CRM or new entities an entity is the CRM name for table um, so you could go in here and say a uh, new file test al and then do table something uh CRMs uh, 
it doesn't really matter and go table type uh, equals urm and start fields and as we can see here so we need an external name so say that's actually the table name in CRM or entity name in CRM and then we can see that all fields have more properties than a normal field in, in business central it has an external name so that's actually the field type in CRM and it also have an external type which is the field type in CRM so in this case we can see that a pick list in CRM becomes an option field um we got GUIs, options, we got oops, stop scrolling, text and so on. So everything gets translated. And you can you could just type this, but but that will be that's very tedious. So thankfully Microsoft has a solution for this. Back in the nav days, they had a PowerShell based solution called new nav CRM table that would generate a text uh, format uh, table for you but now we have a new tool let me let me show you so here is the prompt and you all know that I do like the command prompt um, and I have my app here that we, we were just in let me close it don't save this new file get rid of this so so this is a clean app it's empty it's done um, so when you actually sorry let me go back in here so when we install the a language this guy that one gets installed to let me show users Eric well only on my machine is going VS code extension ms does something dynamics and all, lots of stuff so so this is where the extension the al compiler gets installed and in the bin folder for binaries we find uh, almost a handful of executables alc.exe that's the al compiler Web deploy.exe is probably the tool that the the, com, the air compiler uses to deploy an app. And the Microsoft.dynamics.nav.editorservices.host.exe, that's the, it's called an a, a editor service when the process to run behind the scenes to do the, intelligence and validations and all that stuff but the last one this little guy who is six and a half k uh the and and the altpgen.exe that's that's our friend so that stands for the al table proxy generator and like everything else this is also documented um but the idea behind let me show how it works so the the idea behind the al table proxy generator and we can just you reuse my here and do altp gen is that it will go out to CRM and get the entities that's CRM name for tables get the entities you ask for and generate AL objects for you. Um, and when you, when you call this, you can specify a slash slash. You can do a, let me actually go up here again. So you can, you can do project slash project and tell where is your app dot json file and in this case i'm in the in the folder so i'll just do a dot because that's it and, um, and then you need to tell it where is your which one is your crm and you do that by giving a service ui and then give the uh, the url for your uh, crm and in this case i'll just grab my crm here 
and paste that in here so I don't make any mistakes. And the last one is that you tell what entity you need. So in this case, I want the contact. Well, actually not the last thing because the, the last thing is that let's tell what the table type should be. And right now I'll just go with CDS. It, it's kind of a mystery when it's CRM or CDS. Uh, it's the same table, it doesn't matter which, which API layer you access. But um, to prove a point, I will do CDS here. So I will run this. We need to authenticate. Um, and now the table proxy generator will go out, read all the metadata for this entity, and it will generate a lot of warnings. But don't be scared, we will come back to those. It will generate a table for us. So now we have one called contact here. So this is pretty awesome. And, and and here is a table and, and let's if I search for YouTube, you can see that table 10,016 is a field called new YouTube because I added that field to my contact table just before I um, started this video. Um, so let's create a um, Let's see the data. So let's create a page. Uh, let's call it show me the data. And this was CDS contact. And we'll do a list, we do a usage. List, there we go. And something with First name, last name, full name, YouTube. How about that? Uh, so now we have a page, just like any other page on any other table, with one small, very important uh, thing. That in order for Business Central to use this table, that table needs to be connected. The connection is on demand uh, or manually. So in, and this is different from if you, if you have ever used this on nav, it just worked without you having to do anything. Uh, but now we need to go into on init and we need to call a code unit. So we'll do code unit dot run and then we'll have code unit colon colon CRM integration management. So we call this to connect, to tell the server, please connect uh, our session to CRM. So I'll run this and if I'm lucky, I remember to put in, let's just take launch, launch is good. So has been published to the server. So deployment takes a bit longer here where we're deploying to a cloud sandbox than the usual Docker images. So while we wait, subscribe to the channel. Let me also know, um, do you integrate with CRM? How do you do this? Um, are you using third-party tools? Are you just using this out of the box functionality? Or are you using custom code like this? I would love to know. Okay, so we are deployed and uh, we got data. And we can see that the YouTube field is empty, but since this is a, a table, let's see if we can be allowed to edit this. So let's do, let's do Eva. Corrects and say YouTube Eva. So now we we just you know edited a field. I don't know if I do an F5 a refresh, it's still there. So this is this is field. This is data. 
if I knew how to put this field on the screen in, uh, in CRM, we could of course also see the data there. We could change, let's change Eva's name. Eva's first name actually, Eva, Eva, Eva. How about that? See if we're allowed to do this. And then we'll go into CRM. Uh, and we'll probably need to do all contacts. And let's find Eva. So now we got Eva, Eva in here. Um, so it's just a table we, we treat it as a normal table in uh in business central but it's actually just proxying to uh, proxying the the cm table okay but let's think about this for a second because we already have a table a crm table in there um and contacts now i i took the contact entity and, and created a new table but let's Let's do something else. So let's delete this one. We all good. Goodbye table. And then this page is wrong. So let's just for a second, and we're, we're still ignoring the errors. Uh, Morning, so I'll come back to them for a second. So let's ask it to create table type CRM instead. We know that there's already, this entity is already mapped with table type CRM. Uh, in, in the base app. So I'll run this. And we're getting there. Remember how long the list of warning was. Now we get a way shorter list of warnings. And we still get one file that is awesome. Let's go and look. Okay, so you see, let's get rid of this one. So now we got a, we did not get a table, but we got a table extension because the table proxy generator figured that in our base app, we already have this entity mapped. So instead of just mapping the entire table, it now creates a table extension. And this is where our YouTube field is. So let's try to change our page into using CRM context. So this is now the standard table from the base app, but I still have my YouTube field here because I now have a table extension. So let's run this. And we are still deploying, deploying, deploying. The, and while we wait, uh, the very, very cool thing about the, the table extension is that that will then add fields that you can add to the mapping of the standard integration. So you can actually still use the standard integration if you just have more fields that you need to integrate. Uh, when you're not talking about custom new entities, if you're just saying, oh, we added a field to the contact, just like we did here, uh, then you can actually extend that. And as you can see, we got Eva Eva and she's still YouTube Eva, which is pretty cool. Uh, so now this is the standard table with our table extension um, towards CRM. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about in this video is these warnings. Um, and let's actually, you know, this works, so let's delete it. I'll, and I'll just delete the base app also. No, 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 let me not, not delete it. I'll just delete this one, this guy go away and then we'll go back and ask for 
the CDS version. Just to get, you know, we had the long list of um, warnings. So here we can see that let's let's read this line. No table found for entity account. Unable to create table relation for contact dot account ID. Uh oh, so we are we we're, we're getting a table, but it fails to create a table. So the error message or the one says unable to create table relation. Well, I don't care about table relation, but let's look at that field. Account ID not found. Okay, so if a field is related on the CRM side, you need to have the related entity also present. And we could of course go in and then say, okay, let's do this. We'll, we'll grab account. Um, and you, so you see no table found for entity contact, but hang on, we had contact. So the message here is that, uh, let me just delete these two again. Oh, it doesn't matter, I, all right. So what you need to do in order for these tables to link up correctly is that you need to put them in the same call to, uh, to the, the table proxy generator. So we need to say contact account and you just add them with comma, all the entities you need. Um, because then the proxy will look at all of them and will create all the linking fields. So we, if we look now, there's no, we got a way longer list of errors because now we also have all the errors for the account entity, but we don't have the account error anymore. So if we go back in here, and uh, and we look at contact now we do have let me actually go back here first so now we have field 14 account id and there's a table relation to so cds account dot account id so a table relation just like we would do this normally um and we also have so as a bonus uh because that's kind of mimicking the way it's done on the CRM side is that we get an account ID name field, which is a lookup to just, and it's just implemented here as a flow field. And it does a lookup to the name field on the CDS account uh, entity. So now you figure out, okay, I also need the, uh, I need to know who did something in CRM. So I need system user and I also need to know the business unit. So I need business unit. So you, you go business unit and system user. And, oh, I also need the, the price level and, and, and then you dive into the rabbit hole of figuring out all the entities that you need. And it ha you need to put them in the same one. Otherwise this will, will never work. So what I usually do is that I end up creating a, um, uh, a script that has all of them in it. So I know that I can always uh, run the script. Um, and you see now we get everything um, and, and, and they are nicely connected. So that's how you connect uh, on, on the low level. You can, can create a table, proxy table in Business Central that can read and write and, and you can treat data in CRM as if it's just Business Central data. Um, we have done multiple, uh, very, very complicated custom integration that uh, grabs data from CRM and puts data back in CRM and, and does tons of stuff and it's all just AL code. 
nothing else. It's just AL code. All the integration runs in AL code, typically out of a job queue job or triggered by the way we normally trigger stuff. Uh, there's no external code of any kind. There's no uh, Azure functions and all those things, complicated stuff. It's just AL code that does the entire integration. And the only thing you need to do is connect the basic level of the, 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 the low level connection from uh, Business Central to CRM. Then you need to generate the proxy tables for what you need to do. And then you're off to the races uh, integrating. This is awesome. We use it all the time. And um, I hope you do now that uh, you have seen this video. So until next time, have a wonderful day.